So I'm Sushant Singh, a Senior Fellow at Center for Policy Research in India and a lecturer at Yale University. I'm here at the USIP to discuss the state of India-China ties uh, and to learn more about the state of affairs between the United States and India. So the current state of play on India-China border is very tense. It is a situation is not great at all. Both the sides have deployed large quantum of forces uh, on either side and constructed massive infrastructure to deploy those forces, to support those forces on either side. As per, as per estimates, more than 50,000 uh, Indian soldiers and more than 50,000 Chinese soldiers uh, have been deployed uh, on, 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 on this border. And this situation has gone on since May 2020, when you know, in June, uh, 20 Indian soldiers and four PLA soldiers died in, a, died in a clash. And it is just not in Ladakh, but in other parts of the line of actual control that the Indian forces have been deployed in a forward defensive posture to ensure that there is no further loss of territory. This deployment also means that uh, ties in other spheres between India and China, whether it is in diplomatic sphere or economic sphere, have come to, be, co come to become more tense, which meant uh, that President Xi Jinping did not come to India to attend the G20 summit uh, like many other world leaders did. Or, or the fact that there has been no regular engagement uh, between India and China on many, on many other issues, and India has been trying to reduce its uh, economic dependency on China as well. India's primary aim with respect to China is to ensure that uh, China does not become this hegemonic power in Asia, which is the only power, and India has to act subservient to China within the within the continent or within the within the region. But if you look in the short term, in the immediate term, uh, India's aim is to somehow get over this border crisis and resolve this border crisis in an honourable manner, in a manner in which it does not suffer gravely, whether in terms of loss of territory or loss of. Uh, you know, loss of respect uh, globally or status in the, uh, in, in, the, in the region. And that can be done by restoring the status quo uh, which existed before the crisis began in April 2020. The interests of the United States and the, and the Indian interests do converge when it comes to China. Uh, the United States wants to make sure that China does not become this hegemonic global power, does not become, does not, you know, become the become the number two power, which is contesting, uh, contesting uh, the United States, or is going against democratic norms, or or causing all other kinds of trouble. And it is here that these interests are aligned. Uh, the United States has been supportive of India during this border crisis, whether it is in terms of intelligence support, whether in terms of logistic support, of diplomatic support, and I'm sure that kind of support will continue to uh, continue to happen. India and the United United States not only should have convergent interests but also should have shared values and shared vision because if there is shared values and shared vision then these countries can demonstrate to the rest of the world that even democracies can survive, can do well for people, can bring in economic growth, can help the poor people and it doesn't have to be only a communist dictatorship which can lead to upliftment of masses of people and that's something India and the United States should focus on and particularly the United States should impress upon India that democratic norms you know, values like religious tolerance, values like freedom of speech are important and must be valued.